Uh, no, no, it is my pleasure to join you again. I always remember you as one of the best students at Singularity University in our inaugural class in 2009. And we have become friends since that time, since you were in Silicon Valley with us at Singularity University. I want to talk about the first uh, Spanish simulation to go to Mars, because I was a member of the five astrolanders, as we call ourselves, astrolanders, uh, two years ago. And actually, I have always been in love with space. I went to MIT, and actually, I worked on a Mars simulation while at MIT, and also on the International Space Station, which at the time was called the Freedom Space Station, under President Ronald Reagan in the USA. Now I live in Spain, which used to be the country of non plus ultra, because Europeans didn't know anything beyond Spain and North Africa. It was the end of the world until 1492, when we became the country of plus ultra, because we discovered that there was another continent, plus ultra. And my proposal now is that we go into Mars plus ultra. We move ahead from planet Earth to Mars and beyond. Humanity has had three major human migrations. The first one started when humans evolved in Africa and then left maybe uh, half a million years ago, a quarter of a million years ago. We don't know for sure, but hundreds of thousands of years, they moved from Africa and they began colonizing Europe, the Middle East, the rest of uh, Asia, Australia, and eventually the Americas. That was the first human migration, leaving Africa. The second human migration, big one, was uh, in 1492, when the old world got joined continuously to the new world through the Atlantic Ocean. And that is the plus ultra of Spain. And now we are beginning the third human migration, which is from our planet Earth onto the moon, Mars, and beyond. Um, I lead the Millennium Project uh, for Ibero-America, Spain, Portugal, and Latin America, and we talk about the future trends. And we just published a study about uh, the world in 2050, where we talk about Mars colonies as well. You can look at the report. It's really, really useful to know how uh, the future might be in 2050 under two, three scenarios, actually, three different scenarios. Uh, we used to think of this world of plus ultra, uh, where Spain and Europe was the center of the world, as you can see. That was the map developed by a Belgian cartographer called Mercator. Mercator devised this uh, projection uh, in Europe, and therefore Europe was in the center of the world. It became so popular that even you could find it in some cows, as you can see. Um, but the world is not really centered on Europe. Uh, if you go to China, or for that matter, to Japan, Korea, or many East Asian countries, you will see that the center of the world is China. In fact, China in Chinese means the Middle Kingdom, the country of the center of the world. And those are the two Chinese characters. The first one is middle, and the second one is kingdom, the Middle Kingdom. But we have to go plus ultra. We have to go beyond, far beyond. And if we go down to Australia, we see the world from down under, for example. Or uh, we have to see the world from outside with a new face and also with a new behind. We really need to see the world in a different way because we are beginning to colonize our solar system even though we come from a tiny, tiny planet in a tiny solar system in a small galaxy in this infinite or unknown universe. As Carl Sagan used to say, we are in a little pale blue dot. This is what the Earth is, a pale blue dot. Um, when uh, Neil Armstrong uh, landed on the moon for the first time, 1969, he said, one small step for man one giant leap for mankind, for humankind. 
in fact, now you can see our planet from outside. Uh, we have many uh, space uh, satellites and even the space station orbiting our planet. And you can see Google Earth and uh, from the space station. And even we will soon have interplanetary internet connecting the moon, Mars, and our home-based planet here, Earth. Um, again, Google Moon is fantastic. You can locate where humans landed on the different Apollo missions. Also, we have Google Mars. And again, we have uh, Google Earth, Google Sky, Google Space, Google Universe, and not just Google. Many other companies are beginning to map the whole universe in the USA, in China, in Russia, in Europe. Uh, but we are supposed to go to Mars because Mars is the closest planet, which is very similar to our own Earth. It is, as you can see, about half the diameter of our planet. And relatively speaking, it's very similar in terms of temperature. I mean, between the huge disparities in the universe, Mars is relatively very close in distance, in temperature, also in rotation, and on the, the uh, time of the day, the length of the day, which is just a little bit over 24 hours, which is a fantastic coincidence. There are planets that have days of seven hours or days of 70 hours, but Mars has a day of just over 24 hours. So what a beautiful coincidence. And we will have uh, planetary internet and many ways to begin thinking how we are going to go to Mars. Right now, it might take six months if we take the optimum uh, path today, but it could be uh, only three months if we keep on advancing in technology. As you know, uh, 2021 has been an incredible year because three missions that left the planet last year from China, from the United Arab Emirates, and from the USA, are on Mars now. And next year, in 2022, there will be missions from the European Union, together with Russia, uh, hopefully Japan, and soon also India. This is incredible. This is the public sector, but also the private sector. SpaceX is talking about 2024 or 2026, whenever, but soon. Also Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and some other attempts before, like Mars One, when it existed, or Inspiration Mars, for example. But many more will come. This is the time to go to Mars. And uh, as I mentioned, Mar Mars One was a very interesting initiative that was going to be financed uh, through a reality show on TV. But it was not successful, but SpaceX really has big plans, as we all know, Elon Musk, who said, that he would like to die on Mars, but not on impact, not just landing on Mars. Uh, uh, some of my students have been on the Mars Society simulations. Uh, the first one was in Utah, and uh, friends and the students have been there uh, in uh, Utah desert simulating Mars, and um, it is a fantastic experience. And now we have the first simulation in Spain, and it is called Astroland Interplanetary Agency. And it is in the northern caves of Spain, in Santander, Cantabria, which is full of caves, similar to the lava tubes, the lava tubes that we expect uh, on the moon and on Mars too, created by volcanoes um, um, millions of years ago. We don't know how long ago, but there are many lava tubes, lava caves, that will protect us from radiation. And it could be a fantastic way to create habitats on Mars. So let me show you a short video of this first mission from Spain to Mars.
It was fantastic, experiencing three days on Mars and now landing back safely alive on planet Earth. Una aventura, sinceramente, algo totalmente diferente de lo que puedes encontrar fuera en el día a día. Eh, es una experiencia que te saca totalmente de tu zona de confort, está totalmente en otro mundo, digamos, y tienes que adecuarte, la mentalidad cambiarla y el día a día hacerlo diferente de lo que sería fuera. Entonces, realmente es otro mundo. Um, it was uh, for me as a real candidate for a Mars 100 mission, uh, for Mars 100 mission, uh, I could really understand some issues that, for example, psychologists were talking about, and uh, I really understand the importance of uh, having being open-minded and being able to solve our problems because what we were doing for last all, all the time there it was troubleshooting and uh, solving all problem by problem just to make experiments working and other experiments working something else working and this was really great because um, this is what i like <laughs> i feel absolutely great it was a super great experience to be on mars for four days we were in a cave now and then we always had those great moments every day where you i uh, went on an eva it's called an um, extravehicular activity where you um, go out of the habitat where we were sleeping in and then you were going out in the cave and it just looked like Mars because in Mars you're allowed to live on, in the lava tubes so it's perfect. We can go for another three days. We can back home. Back home. So uh, you are all welcome to come to Astroland Interplanetary Agency in northern Spain, in Santander. This place is really absolutely incredible, and it is working also on some projects with the European Space Agency, for example. And uh, this was the first set of five Astrolanders uh, from uh, four nationalities, and our common language was English. We were training for months before going to the uh, lava caves, to the lava tubes. And it was a lot of teamwork. We had to prepare everything first above ground before uh, uh, launching for Mars and then staying there for one week. Uh, we were um, actually said goodbye by the president of the region of Cantabria, who is like the governor of the state of Cantabria, Santander. And after that, we began our trip on July 16, 2019. This was the 50th anniversary of the time that the Apollo left for the moon with humans. It was July 16, 1969, 50 years earlier when the first uh, moon astronauts actually went to the moon. And uh, we had the president of the region of Spain and then we arrived on Mars and we landed on these caves and we began searching for our home. Uh, it was an incredible experience with all this equipment going um, down a couple of kilometers down in this long and beautiful cave until we discovered our habitat, the Mars habitat, the Ares the station, which is, um, as you can see, a really fantastic structure and you can go and visit there if interested. Uh, it was, as I mentioned, a lot of teamwork because the life of every one of us depended on the life of the others. Our lives were dependent on the lives of others. So it was truly teamwork. And um, we did many extravehicular activities in the morning and in the afternoon every day. Uh, I was in charge of the science team, the biology team looking for life. And so we took a lot of water samples from the cave and we cultured those samples and we actually discovered a new amoeba. This was incredible. We called it the Astro Quadrula. And now it has been recognized as a new life form. Uh, it was not discovered on planet Mars, but it was discovered in Northern Spain in this Mars simulation. So we are very, very proud of this new amoeba that we discovered. And we need to collaborate, like with some of our former students. Uh, is made in Space was created by students from Singularity University in 2010. Just like Nuno Martins was at Singularity University in 2009, and they did, and they are doing incredible things, like Nuno is doing now. We also had other incredible adventures and teams like uh, Made in Spain. 
in space, not in Spain, in space. And we are going to be terraforming Mars. And this is incredible. We are beginning, once we start the colonization of Mars, terraforming Mars. And so the first Martians will be humans. We will be the first Martians, or at least the first big Martians, because there might have been bacteria life before. But uh, in terms of intelligent, big life forms, probably it will be us. We will be the first Martians. And we have to go into outer space because uh, as the father of Russian astronautics said, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the earth is the cradle of humanity, but we cannot live forever in a cradle. We have to move on. We have to move up. We have to colonize the space. Now we know there are hundreds hundreds of space, uh, of um, exoplanets in space, hundreds, soon it will be thousands of exoplanets that might be habitable. And this is beautiful, this is incredible, this is only beginning. And I remember when I went to visit Sir Arthur C. Clarke in Sri Lanka about 15 years ago, and he was worried about intelligent life in the universe because he said we might be the only one and anyway, it would be interesting to find out because evolution continues. And how will it continue in outer space? We humans, uh, in our current form, we have existed for maybe only 100,000 years in this form of Homo sapiens sapiens. What will come after us? Because we're very new. We have existed very little. As opposed to the dinosaurs, the dinosaurs ruled the planet for two hundred million years and bacteria for three billion years so we humans we are really nothing we're just a hundred thousand years nothing but we need a space program because larry nevins said the dinosaurs became extinct because they didn't have a space program and if we become extinct is because we don't have a space program so we need to colonize the space as elon musk says we need to become a multi-planetary civilization. So everything has yin and yang. And this is so complex that there is even little, little yin yang and even more little, little, little yin yang inside. And there is always the dark side of the force, the dark side. And look at the world today illuminated at night. And look at Korea, because there are two Koreas. There is South Korea illuminated with a fantastic space program and the best internet in Asia. And North Korea, very dark and with no internet. Actually, North Korea is the last planet in the world still without public internet. So where do we want to go? Into the future, into space, into telecommunications, or into the past. So we need to meditate. I love to meditate in many different ways. Um, Hindu meditation, Buddhist meditation. We have to meditate to think about the future. And I want to finish inviting you to come to Astroland Agency and to join us for this experience of Mars. So let me show you a very short clip of one Nat Geo, National Geographic uh, documentary about Mars. Join me for this video going to Mars. Just 350 miles west of Jezero Crater, where Mars 2020 will hunt for alien life, we return to Sirtis Major, where we first thought we saw it. And here, where our journey began, we find the key to living on Mars. No human invention has yet cracked the radiation problem. But these underground wonders might just be our salvation.
deep in the mountains of northern Spain. A team of scientists is exploring how we might survive in Mars's lethal environment. I believe what we are going to do on Mars will be incredible. But it is not easy. We evolved on planet Earth and our biology is accustomed to this planet. We need to go underground and obviously the deeper we are, the more protection we will have from radiation. Some of these caves are really, really long. They could be several kilometers long, so we could go deeper and deeper and create a habitat for us to live. Here, in its own version of a Martian lava tube, the team can find out what this subterranean life might be like. We need to be independent in every way, not just psychologically independent, but in terms of food, materials, resources, energy. This would be our home on planet Mars, and we need to create an environment for us to survive and to thrive. Lava tubes will provide a ready-made shelter for the first intrepid pioneers. We live between the last human single planetary generation and the first multiplanetary generation. Once we colonize Mars, we will change history. We will change the future. And it may be in these lava tubes that the quest that has driven our interest in Mars for centuries finally comes to an end. Those same conditions that will keep us safe underground might, for billions of years, have kept something else safe too. Living Martian life. Once this place made us dream of an Earth-like world. But our journey has revealed Mars's story to be more astonishing than anything we could have imagined. And now, at last, it's almost within our reach. So, my friends, I used to dream uh, about being the first person. So, my friends, join me to go to Mars uh, in Astroland Interplanetary Agency. And uh, we will discover a new planet, a new universe, a new life, and a new future. This is the best time to be alive. The last single planetary generation and the first multiplanetary generation from planet Earth. So, let's go into the future, my friends, to Mars and beyond. Thank you.